Hello viewers, how are you? Hope you are fine. Welcome to my channel, Drawing Time with Story. Today I am going to show you how to draw a blue orchid flower, a lovely flower. This flower is really rare, but its beauty is so magical that you can't move your eyes from these beautiful, elegant flowers. While drawing, Let's know some information about this beautiful flower. Around 120 million years ago, when the dinosaurs ruled the land, much of the world was covered by primordial forest, and plant life was rapidly becoming diverse. Flowering plants were evolving, and one of the first of these was the orchid. As the world underwent many changes, especially a uh, species of both plant and animal life died out or were replaced, but the orchid family expanded, populating every corner of the world except Antarctica, living on trees, rocks, in the ground, or under it. Tropical rainforest or lush grassland high mountain or bog, they thrived. Nothing seems capable of upsetting their evolutionary process. Indeed, it is generally accepted that in the world today, there are over 35,000 different species of object in existence. Many myths abound concerning them, the most common of which is that they are parasitical plants. This is not so. Orchids grow on trees too, but they don't feed from them. They use the host merely as somewhere to be. The ever facts much make them one of the most successful and adaptable family of plants, which probably explains their long family history. Or do they lack in internal resources? They will try to obtain elsewhere some orchids which prefer a more acidic condition will encourage ants to live on them. Even in some instances, creating suitable chambers for their guests to live in. How incredible is that, isn't it? And in addition to wording of their enemies, the ants increase the acidity of the plant through their own use of formic acid as a defense system. Orchids have known all about the birds and bees far longer than we have and use that knowledge to good advantage. When it comes to reproduction, Orchids are extremely versatile, but individually selective and have adapted themselves to use a variety of pollinators, with or without their consent. Where many insects are concerned, the plant attracts them either by smell or mimicry, or in some instances, even a little still. It takes but little imagination to understand what the orchid on the left or as more commonly known the bee orchid is trying to mimic in order to attract the pollinator. The nature is so amazing, it is full of incredible things. I didn't know the information. Uh, I hope uh, some of my viewers can know the information but it's amazing. Can you imagine a flower is creating mimicry to attract its pollinators? That is absolutely amazing, I think so. Now, let's know the smell factor. The smell factor is an obvious attraction to a pollinator. But mimicry? Well, the flowers of many orchids are so designed to look like either an aggressor of the pollinator or it partner. In the case of the bee orchid illustrated, male bees are attracted to the plants because the flower looks like a receptive female. 
and during a frustrating attempt at mating with the flower, the male bee will become the unwitting carrier of pollen. That's absolutely amazing. Which it will duly deposit on its next amorous fight of fancy. Some objects adapt the lure technique and have long stems, the tips of which bear their flowers. These can dance effectively in the bridge and look amazingly like butterflies. Many object flowers provide an ideal landing platform for their pollinator to use. This is usually so designed that in getting to the nectar, the insect has to come into contact with the pollinia of the object and this will detach itself and stick like super glue to the back of the unwitting messenger, only to be brushed against the reproductive organs of its next port of call. In some instances, the orchid aids the certainty of securing the pollinia by having a hinge and tilt mechanism to its lip. This ensures that the insect is slapped hard against the pollinia as it runs forward into the flower. Now we come to the point of stealth. In this case, the sleeper orchid leaves the insect with the promise of a drink from its pouch or attacks it by scent or sight to the edge of the pouch, which is very slippery and polished. Before it knows it, the hapless pollinator finds itself stuck at the bottom and is either too wet to fly or the shape of the pouch precludes it and there is only one way out which the insect will eventually find. As it does escape, it will have to crawl through a small doorway which is so tight that the pollinator is once again pressed firmly against the pollinia as it escapes, only to repeat the exercise once more at another flower, this time depositing the pollinia as it collects a fresh one without even knowing. Although orchids have a reputation for being symbols of fertility and elegance, Different colored orchids have a diverse range of symbolisms. Uh, okay, let us start with the white color. White orchid symbolizes innocence and purity as well as elegance and reverence. Pink orchid symbolize femininity, grace, and joy. Yellow orchids symbolize friendship and new beginnings. They make great gifts for a friend to celebrate an accomplishment. Purple orchids symbolize royalty and admiration and are traditionally given as a sign of respect. Orange orchids symbolize pride, enthusiasm, and boldness. Do you know that vanilla extract, a commonly used flavor enhancer in sweets and baked goods, is actually derived from the vanilla orchid plant? I hope you enjoyed my video, my drawing, and the information I delivered about this elegant flower. Please at first see my videos and then uh, press the subscription button. Please stay connected with me. Stay